welcome back. And of course, uh, today we are continuing our conversation uh, with the issue that we know has been at the forefront of all the Legion's minds. Um, you know, I think the, in order to be able, I think, to, to close off the conversation, uh, there are several, several people that we need to hear from. One, we're about to get into, which is the uh, government representative of Guatemala, which uh, Foreign Minister Hoval. But I also think we are awaiting, of course, the conversation that will take place with our foreign minister, perhaps a comment from Prime Minister Barrow as to uh, what the results mean, uh, what it represents, and really what it does for our own timeline here in Belize. Um, looking back, I think, on, on the past three days, uh, there was a wealth of information that we were able to get being on the ground in Guatemala. And uh, it really started, for me, I think, in being able to have conversations from you across the border into uh, talking to taxi drivers, talking to people that were moving around, understanding where this issue uh, fit within uh, their, their priorities um, in, in deciding whether or not they were going to go out to vote. Um, whether or not uh, there was uh, an, a thorough understanding of the issue itself. Um, and I really found that the conversations with the people um, were uh, the major content in terms of understanding uh, how Guatemalans see this issue. So that was really, I think, an enlightening portion. We shared some interviews with you. Hopefully we get to share it again um, so that you can see uh, what the people in Guatemala are saying. And uh, we also, of course, covered the referendum itself, uh, looked at uh, the results by the end of the night, and um, we were able to share that with you and, and the initial reaction by Ambassador Rosado. Um, as I said earlier, the, the conversation continues. It is a critical, critical time for Belize. We were told, of course, that after the uh, results from Guatemala, we would see an activation or intensification of our own education campaign on this issue. And so uh, I suppose that's what we're awaiting at this point in time. But we'll be talking about more of that a bit later. Um, what we are going to move into at this time is uh, an interview that I was able to uh, conduct with the Foreign Minister of Guatemala, Sandra Hoval Polanco. And this is, uh, of course, the first government uh, response we were able to get um, after the results uh, were uh, reported. So let's move into that conversation now. The referendum means for Guatemala. Firstly, congratulations on being able to uh, have a referendum without incident and uh, being able to get the Guatemalan people to vote yes. Pues muchísimas gracias. Para mí es un gusto. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to speak with you. We are very happy about the results of the referendum that took place on Sunday, April 15th. I understand that we are about to finalize the count of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, but we have reliable data, which is 92.21% of the tables screened. As a new foreign minister, you adopted the post in, in a very critical time in this process. Um, what would you say is the current state of relations between Belize and Guatemala, uh, the foreign ministers and, and the president and prime minister? Yo creo que la relación bilateral entre Guatemala y Belize en, está en su mejor momento. I think that the bilateral relations between Belize and Guatemala are at their best at the moment. They could not have been better. We have excellent relations, not only at the ministerial level, but also at the presidential level. President Morales is convinced that the bilateral relations with Belize can only get better. Evidence of this was the Garifuna cultural exchange that took place here in Guatemala. They performed at various places and the participation was very good. This is allowing Guatemala and Belize to have a participatory exchange. With regards to Foreign Minister Elrington, we met recently at the OAS where we discussed the latest developments regarding this specific issue, and I believe the relationship with Belize has been improving much more. I think the relationship with Belize has been improving much more. Now, let's, let's take a look at the uh, referendum. And uh, obviously, you were able to, to uh, have the day unfold uh, with no incident, as I said earlier. Would you consider the campaign uh, put forward by the government to be a success? 
Creo que este proceso informativo que nosotros... I think that this informative process regarding the referendum has been in existence for many years. Two years ago, we informed the people that we would be having a referendum, and in October of last year, we intensified the process, and recently with the active participation of the president and myself on a tour nationwide. There hasn't been any incident that indicates that things are not going well. On the contrary, the good relations between both countries have allowed us to have good communication, not only at a ministerial level, but also at our institutional levels. For people looking into the process in Guatemala and they see an overall voter turnout of uh, 26 to 27 percent at this point, they'll say it's low, that perhaps the campaign was not effective. What do you say to that? Creo que que haya votado un 26,33% de la población guatemalteca. I think that having a 26.33% voter turnout out of approximately 7.5 million people, almost 27% of the population, is an unprecedented success for Guatemala. In the last two referendums, the level of participation had been substandard. The fact that about 2 million Guatemalans went to vote at a referendum, which is not part of a political campaign on an issue that is of national importance, means a lot to us. And 96 to 97 percent of those voters voted yes. They voted because we want legal certainty. They voted because we have a neighboring country that will be our neighbor forever. And we will always have an excellent relationship. We want to go to a court that will tell us where that borderline will be, which at this moment does not exist. I think that 26 to 27 percent says a lot about Guatemalans. Do you think the yes vote to go to the ICJ, given that the campaign was carried out primarily by the government, is an affirmation of uh, being in support with government? Yo creo que primero hay que tomarlo desde el punto de vista que es un tema de nación. We have to look at the issue from a national point of view and not from a governmental one. And I think it's important to look at it from that point of view. It is not an issue that has been part of only President Morales's government, but it has existed for many years. And obviously this will transcend this government until it reaches the International Court of Justice. Experts have said that this process could take six to eight years. Having said that, it is an important issue for Guatemala and its foreign policy. There was a lot of education uh, that had to take place for the people of Guatemala to understand the claim as it is today. What is the uh, claim that was uh, used by the government as a part of the education campaign? What do you now claim of Belize? Pues, Para Belice, yo creería que lo que nosotros hicimos aquí en Guatemala... What we did here in Guatemala in educating the people as to the process and why we should go to a court would also be a way in which Belize could carry out its educational campaign. The Guatemalans voted for the International Court of Justice to make that decision. My recommendation is for Belize to do the same, for the court to give that legal certainty. We've seen maps uh, that have been a part of uh, the campaign period that shows uh, a claim by Guatemala of uh, 12,000 square kilometers. Um, is that a part of what was being informed uh, to the Guatemalan people? Pues yo creo que la, la, el proceso de información que se hizo. The educational campaign that took place in the 15 districts that we visited, out of the 22 that took part, indicated that it is the International Court of Justice that will decide the border limits between the two countries. The people of Guatemala know this, and that was part of the educational campaign. This was my role on the tour, to inform the people that it will be the court that will decide. We will now start a process based on a special agreement that will validate this. Cancier, why do you think that uh, five million people in Guatemala decided not to participate in this decision? I can't say why they didn't vote. In a presidential election, the participation is not very high also. 
It is not an obligation, but this one has had the highest voter percentage up to now. Those 5 million gave the benefit of the doubt to the 2 million that voted yes to go to the ICJ. Do you think they don't care? Is it that they don't care about the issue or they're happy with things as they are now? Creo que la población está enterada de, de lo que estamos haciendo. Y está the people are aware and convinced of what we are doing. If not, they would not have voted yes. We are all happy. I am very satisfied and happy with the work we are doing at the Foreign Ministry. This work has been going on for many years, and the people here are all career diplomats. And here I am representing the two million that said yes, while the other five million gave these two million the opportunity to vote yes in order for us to have better and stronger bilateral ties with Belize. Para que sigamos fortaleciendo nuestros lazos con Belize. It is very important for us to understand uh, what happens after there is a final ruling in the ICJ. Uh, how committed is Guatemala to being able to uphold whatever the ICJ rules? When the International Court of Justice gives a final verdict on this issue, Guatemala will abide by what the court says. We will obey what the court orders and it will be the court that will decide where the boundary will be between the two countries. As a country, the only thing we need to do is obey what the court says. And this is why we are having this referendum. This is why we ask the people if they want us to go to the court, because it is the court that will decide the future of this territorial, insular, and maritime dispute. Beyond that, Guatemala will not do anything else. What do you see as the economic benefits of a resolution of the dispute at the ICJ? Both countries will benefit economically. We have a partial scope agreement that we need to implement. There exists a binational commission that is responsible to put to use the bilateral agreements that we have. In the future, we can have a free trade agreement, which will be phenomenal for both countries, since we have so much to offer. But the benefits will be more than economical. There will also be political, social, and cultural benefits, a more active diplomacy, more tourism. I see it from many points of view. I am very enthusiastic that we have reached this point because we can work more than we have been doing. I insist on a judicial assurance because it will allow us to work on a greater scale in both countries. We have been neighbors all our lives and we can continue having excellent relations. What better way to do this than to do it in a correct manner? The road to the ICJ can be anywhere from, at minimum, five to seven years after Belize is able to get a yes vote at the referendum. What are some of your priorities as foreign minister in being able to build relationship, uh, continue to build the relationship with Belize during that time? What are some of the priority areas? Yo creo que dos temas. Two issues. We need to separate the issue of the territorial and maritime dispute from the issue of bilateral relations. They are two different things. What is important is that once the first issue is resolved, the bilateral relations will be strengthened. That will allow us to reach a point where we will have an excellent business, social, and cultural relationship and have that openness between our two brotherly countries. Y poder tener esa apertura de los países hermanos que somos. And keeping in that theme, the bilateral relations, uh, there was, it was a very important achievement when we were able to agree on the 13 agreements for uh, the relationship between Belize and Guatemala. Where are we now in terms of getting those agreements uh, ratified? I think that the Congress needs to ratify two or three more agreements out of the 13 that have been signed. I insist that the commission that both countries have established through our ambassadors is responsible to implementing these agreements. 20 days ago, there was a meeting in which a very important development took place. But at a meeting later this month, we will get to know the result of this past Sunday. And also, intensifying the agreements and see how we can put them to use. 
We will also be going to the OAS and present the results of the referendum, which is part of the commitment that we have. Like I said before, we are at a great moment in bilateral relations with Belize, and we need to take advantage of that in all aspects. Uh, the ball is in our court. Uh, we need to move to the referendum uh, in Belize. And we've been, we know that it will not happen until after our re-registration exercise. Uh, it is an, it, we can't tell at this time how Belizeans will vote, but there is a possibility that that vote may be no. From Guatemala's end, what, what's your view on what would happen next if, it's, if that's the case? We will continue with our process. We hope that does not happen in Belize because that will be a setback for the process you are undertaking. The idea is for us to move forward. Our next step is to start working by gathering all our respective documents, make the necessary announcements, and wait for Belize to give us a positive response so that we both can resolve our dispute. What advice would you give uh, to the government of Belize uh, as they head into the process of activating our own campaign since uh, you were able to do so successfully? You all have a smaller population than ours and so it should be easier to reach out to your people. The presidential tour helped us a lot in that we were able to explain the history of the issue and the importance of going to vote. So my advice would be to do the same. We had phenomenal results. By informing the people of what the two countries need, they went out and supported us. And in my final question, just what does this yes vote mean for Guatemala? Significa que Guatemala quiere una certeza jurídica. This means that Guatemala wants legal certainty and that it wants to put an end to this territorial, insular, and maritime dispute with Belize. Guatemala con Belize, sobre Belize. ¿Tiene algo que quiere decir a, las, a, a la gente de Belice después de este proceso? Pues muchísimas gracias por la entrevista. Estamos comprometidos con el proceso. Thanks for the interview. And we are committed to the process towards ending this dispute and we hope that Belize will have its own referendum that will be a positive for both countries. La respuesta sea positiva tanto para Belice como para nosotros para poder seguir con este proceso. And there you have it. Uh, that was our conversation that we had yesterday uh, with the Foreign Minister of Guatemala, uh, Sandra Joval Polanco. Uh, we will, of course, continue to discuss this issue. In fact, we will do so right after the break. We're going to be joined by former Foreign Minister Lisa Showman uh, to discuss uh, what the referendum in Guatemala represents uh, in Belize and definitely looking at our own path forward. Uh, that's going to be your conversation. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll get right into it. So stay tuned.